All right, well, welcome to the MLA workshop. Today we are going to focus on creating a works cited page. And as you can see, I have already started this uh, works cited page and I'm gonna to explain to you how I did this and we're gonna find some more citations and add them to this page. Now, a works cited page um, is always found at the, uh, at the end of your research paper. It's a list of sources that you used when doing research and you are giving credit to these sources because otherwise it's plagiarism. So you'll notice this uh, is an MLA style, which is what we're talking about today. There are other styles, depending on your class, your discipline, your instructor, you might be asked to use uh, APA or another style, but this is MLA. And here I have two citations and each one of these as you can see, is a separate citation and a citation identifies your source. So here we have two of them. You will see each new citation begins on the margin. And what does this mean? Um, let me just go over the first citation. You'll see the author, last name first. This is a chapter in a book and that's why it's in quotation marks. And this is part of the Gale Opposing Viewpoint series. We also have this in print as well, but this is an online version. And you'll see the publisher and the year. So if I did not have uh, access to the, if this was only the print version that I was looking at, this is all I would need, the author, the chapter, and uh, where I found it, the publisher and the date. but. Here is the name of the database, Scale and Context, Opposing Viewpoints. And it is preferred in MLA style to add some kind of uh, persistent link or URL, which is right here. And the date I accessed. And why does it have two dates? Because it's incorrect, right? That's it. It's only one date. The date I accessed this was today. Um, the second citation is a website. And Centers for Disease Control is basically both my author and my publisher, so I don't need to repeat it. So we're using them as the author because there's not an individual author. This is a corporate or group author. And this is the title of the page, Understanding How COVID-19 Vaccines Work. And they published their webpage on the 9th of March, 2021. And you'll notice the format for typing your dates. And then here's the URL and the date that I accessed. So these are just two citations. We're gonna to try to add maybe three or four more from various library sources, online sources you'll see. But I just wanna point out how did I, first of all, how did I format this? The, they are in alphabetical order. So you can see each new citation begins on the margin. So we have Atkin and then centers. And I have created what's called a hanging indent. And I am uh, using Microsoft Word. We all have access to free Microsoft Word through our SMC email. And I have created what's called a hanging indent, which is a backwards paragraph. So when I see all of this indent, I know it is all part of this one citation. And the only time I enter is when I'm ready to paste or type my new citation. But I set this up by using the line spacing option. So I'll show you how I did this because you can't just tab to do this. So once you paste or type some citations, you will select all of the citations you have and then you'll come up here. Now it depends on which version you have of Microsoft Word. Uh, mine is this version and it says line and paragraph spacing right here. You'll see this little icon. And when you click on that, line spacing options, and this is the real the key to your beautiful works cited page. So you'll want to create what's called hanging indents. Right, the default should be 0 0.5. And then the left and right indentation should be zero. And before and after uh, spacing should be zero and the line spacing must be double. So your entire page should be double spaced. And then here I'm, I've checked automatically adjust right indent when document grid is defined. This is the important one though, don't add space between paragraphs of the same style because we do not want extra spaces between our citations. 
And then we're going to snap to grid when uh, document grid is defined. Okay, so that's how we set our hanging indent. So remember it's under special, it's called hanging. The line spacing is double. All of these indentation and spacing should be zero and you do not want extra spaces between your paragraphs or between your citations. So when I said, okay, that's how I created these hanging indents. And then at the top of the page, I center works cited, and that should be plural with a capital W, capital C. And there you'll have in the right-hand corner, you'll have your last name and, and then you'd also have the page number. But I, I'm, this is the only thing we're doing today is the work cited, so I didn't add any page numbers. So um, I have a chapter in a book, I have a chapter in an ebook actually, and then I have a web page. And I'm going to find some more sources now. So I'm going to show you where to find some academic sources and then we're gonna add them here to our work cited. So I'm going to go to the library homepage and we have a direct URL, which is just smc.edu slash library. And when you see the photo of the library, you'll know you're in the right place. There it is, library. Now, if and look, you can chat with us, but we don't need to chat right now. We have librarians like me ready to chat with you. 24 hours a day, we have, uh, we're part of a consortium. Oops, I think I accidentally said chat with me. No, thanks. <laughs> So if you are on any other college page, you can find us under student support between counseling and tutoring. So there we are. Right. And then you'll uh, want to scroll down past the photo of the library. And what we're going to do is start with the one search because this is really where you will find books in the library, whether they be online or in print. So here I'm going to type uh, my subject, which today is vaccines, and then I'm just going to enter. Now the one search, as I said, we'll, we'll find books that are in the library in print and online as well as other uh, sorts of information, some journal articles, but we're really using the one search to find books. That's what we use this for in the library. So what I'm going to do is uh, the format I want books, there we go, books. And I usually sort by date because I almost always I would like the most recent information. So I want date newest, especially with a scientific topic like vaccines. So then I'm going to find a book that I'm interested in and maybe this will be the one I use. And you'll notice you can email all of this information to yourselves. But I'm going to click on the title of the book. And you'll notice right here, most of the uh, sources that we have access to will help you with your citations. So I'm going to click on citation. So I'm going to cite this entire book. And here's the citation they created for me. And I see a, a problem. So you have to remember there might be an error. Just because the computer generates a citation for you doesn't mean it's perfect. So I'll tell you what's wrong with it and we'll fix it in a minute. But I'm going to copy this, oops, this entire citation. Now, the problem is uh, it should be, uh, author's name should be last name first and they haven't done that here. So I'm gonna copy it. I'm going to go back to my Word document And I'm actually going to place it here and you'll see why, because it's going to be in alphabetical order. So the first thing I do is look at this little icon, the clipboard, paste options. I can match destination formatting because I have already formatted my page. And normally this would be in the wrong order. However, I have just realized that Chico is the first name. So it's supposed to be last name first. So I am going to, and M is their middle initial. So it, see the last name is Ben Menahem and the first name is Shiko. And then there's middle initial M. So that's why there's a period and then a comma 
space at all, because when you have three or more authors, which is the case with this book, then you use this at all instead of typing all those names. At all is Latin, it means and all the others or and all the rest. So just make sure that if you're going to copy and paste a citation that it's actually correct. So now this is, this is correct. So we have them in alphabetical uh, order by the author's last name. And you'll notice the title of the book is in italics because we're citing an entire book. So that would be in italics. See up here, we were citing a chapter from this book. And that's why the chapter, the smaller work was in quotation marks. But here we've got um, the title of the book in italics and then the publisher, which is MIT actually. MIT should be the publisher, so I don't need all of that. MIT or MIT Press, and then the year the book was published, which is 2020. So it's a very simple citation because this is how I would cite a print book if I had the book in my hand, as opposed to an ebook where I'd have to add where I actually, what database I found, where I found the book and the URL and the access date. I only use that for eBooks or inf any information I find online. So that's why this one is so brief because this is an actual book. So we don't add a URL or there won't be a URL if it's an, a printed book and there won't be any date of access. So now we have three citations. So then I'm going to go back to the library homepage and I'm going to go to smc.edu slash library. And I'm going to scroll down. And now, as I said, the only time we really use the one search is when we want to look for books. So most of the other sources we're going to find are, will be in the databases. And that's in general when you're doing research for your uh, college or university classes. Go to the library databases. And then always scroll down and we're going to look at all databases. And we have quite a, a number of databases. This is where you can find uh, articles and magazines, newspapers, journals, lots of information here. But I'm going to start with a newspaper database. So that happens to be at the bottom of the list. So because it's called US News Stream. So I'm going to scroll down all the way down well, oh, there we go, U.S. News Stream. This includes all, basically all the major U.S. newspapers and it is updated every day. So we will find articles actually written today as well as older. So U.S. News Stream, I'm gonna click on that. It will open it up, I think, because I've already logged on. Yes, I logged on earlier, a few minutes ago, but when you are off campus, it will ask you to log on with your username and password, which is the same way that you log on to Canvas. So here I actually have several search boxes. I can even add another one if I need to, but I, we're just we're looking for citations today. We're not spending a lot of time searching. So I'm just going to type my basic word vaccines, and then I can turn off autocomplete. And then maybe I'll just be a little more precise. I'll ask for COVID-19. And when you see the option full text, you always want to check that so that you can make sure you're getting a full article. And see, I don't have to fill in the third box. I don't need that for anything. I'm just going to search. And this is uh, our newspaper database. And these are again by subscription only. So you do have to log in if you're off campus. And look at how many articles, over 200,000 articles, that's too many, but I'm going to limit my search. In the left-hand frame, I'm going to first of all limit to newspapers because I want to find some articles in one of the major US newspapers. And also what I want is the latest article. So instead of by relevance, I'm in the left frame, it says sorted by relevance. I'm going to sort by most recent first. And then I might take a look at a couple of these and just pick an article and see which one I want. And in, again, this is just a, a works cited um, workshop, an MLA workshop. So it's not 
really about research. Research does take a lot longer than five minutes. So um, let's see, maybe I'll take an article from the Washington Post. So here it is, a long-term ailment has taught me that we can beat this pandemic. It does sound like it's a, an opinion article. I might want to look at something else. Maybe I wanna look at keeping planes, uh, middle seats open, cuts COVID risks. They do mention vaccine passports and that's why this article comes up. So maybe I'll just click on that one and, uh, from the Washington Post. So you'll see the full text, the full article is right here and it may be a page or two pages long. They're, they're relatively brief news articles. So here I can, and all the databases are almost all of them will let you email this information to yourselves. And when you click on email, you can also email the citation. See, um, include bibliographic citations at the end and remember if you're uh, looking for MLA, then you want to make sure you scroll down. The problem with this database is that it's their citations are out of date. They're using the MLA 7th edition and we are on the 8th edition and I believe that soon will be superseded by a 9th edition. So keep that in mind. And uh, we're going to look at the citation. I don't need to email this. We're going to click on cite. So it's where when uh, you're searching the databases, look for cite. Uh, with the C. And let's see what their citation looks like. So the, the default is APA. And I know this is very confusing. And again, look at all these choices they're giving me. We want MLA. And the best we can do here is look for the MLA 7th. That's all they have. So I'll take that citation, but I might have to do a, a bit of editing. So I'm going to copy this citation and I'm noticing Compton is the author's last name. So I'm going to go back to my works cited page and Compton comes after centers. So remember if I, I'm at the end of a previous citation, all I have to do is enter and it begins on the margin, but look what happens when I enter. I can always um, get rid of this hyperlink because it doesn't look very good unless your instructor wants live hyperlinks then you have to make them all live. But what I'm going to try to do is uh, select this and right click hyperlink, hyperlink. I want to remove the hyperlink. That means it should not be, see, shouldn't be in blue or underlined. So maybe rather than entering, I can just click on the margin there. So I can paste. Now look at what happens when I paste my citations. I don't see this is with no formatting. So I can just click on this little clipboard paste options and match destination formatting. And then it picks up the formatting that I've already created here. However, let's look at this citation. We've got the author last name first. The title of the article is in quotation marks. All right. Now, it's uh, an article in the Washington Post, that would be in italics, and MLA calls this a container, the, so because this article is found in the Washington Post, which is a container, and this, all of this is found in, in ProQuest, which would be the container, but ProQuest is the name of the publisher. So we really want to replace this with the name of our database, because that's the actual container, it's US. News stream. Pro ProQuest is just the publisher of the database. Now, web is old fashioned. That's from the previous editions. They use the word accessed, as you noticed. The main thing to remember is, and we don't want italics, but I'll go back and change that accessed and the date. We don't want italics here. So I can come back up here, get rid of that up the little eye up there. And um, I want to end with a period and the important thing is to be consistent. Also, you're providing all this information so that anyone else can retrace your steps. And here's something confusing, right? This says April 20th, 2021. And this says 20 April, 2021. First of all, they're both the same date because this is from today's paper. This article was published today. 
And I happen to find it today. So that's why we have the same date twice, but we want to be consistent. So we don't want this format and we want them both to be the same. So April abbreviated. So you see the date format should be 20 uh, and you do abbreviate all the longer months. The only months you don't abbreviate are May, June and July. And so now the other thing we would wanna do again is be consistent. All of our online citations have a URL or a persistent link. So they didn't give us one, but we're going to go back here and just find, I'm gonna close that. We're gonna find, here's the article and here's the URL. So I'm just gonna copy that and add it to my citation. Whoops. Because remember, you want to be consistent. You want all of your citations to basically look the same. So also there's too much space here, just one space there. And then right before the name of the database, there we go. And after the date, this should be where we place the URL. And um, to fill in this blank space, I found the easiest way to do it is just to put your cursor down here somewhere and leave a space. That helps a little bit. Unfortunately, we get this hyperlink. So you just select and right click hyperlink, remove, remove hyperlink. So, I mean, these are a lot of details, but you do want your works cited page to look presentable. You want it to look nice because if you have a beautiful works cited page, your instructors will assume you've also written a thoughtful paper. And here you see there are four citations in alphabetical order and they all have a URL except for this second one because this was a print book, but the rest of them are online sources. So we have a URL here, part of each one. And we've ended each citation with the date with accessed and the date we found it, which is today's date. Again, we don't do that with this second citation because it's a printed book and that's irrelevant. But the rest of our citations are online and we end with the word accessed and the date we found it. And um, let's see, and here usually you end each part of a citation with a period and a space because that way it doesn't all run together. So we have one, two, we have four citations. So we're gonna add, well, we have time to add two more, I think. So we're going to go back to the library homepage because we've got, um, we just found an article from a newspaper and now we want to find an academic journal article. So I'm back to the library homepage. So remember that's smc.edu slash library. So we're going to scroll down and go back to the databases. I'm gonna close that and scroll down and click on all databases and I want a scientific journal. So I'm gonna scroll down alphabetically. I'm gonna look for the science database. So I'm going to be scrolling, uh, uh, nursing, opposing viewpoints, science full text select. And actually here I can find a science magazine as well as science journals. So I'm going to click on that. It should let me in, yes, because I've already logged in. All right, so now I'm just going to type vaccines. Again, you would normally wanna be a lot more precise, but I am just going to search to see what information is available. What is the latest information available here with the word vaccines? And the first thing I'm going to do is limit my search to academic journals under source types, because I want scholarly sources. These are articles written by scholars, by experts, in this case, probably scientists who've done research. And I also want the latest articles. So I'm going to click on relevance and sort by newest. Now I have over 2000 articles. So I might want to add something to my search, maybe COVID-19. But again, today, we're just 
uh, worried about citations. So I am going to just take one of these articles, maybe the latest one, which was from April, 2021. These scientific journals are often just published uh, quarterly or every month or every few months, they're not published as frequently as magazine or news articles. So this does not have an exact date, just April 2021. Sometimes it's just a season um, or a month as it is here. So we're going to click on the title, Addressing Vaccine Concerns. This is the title of the actual article. PDF full text, that's the full article right there. Here, I'm just going to see the abstract, which is the summary, it tells me what this article is about. And in the right-hand frame, I, you can email all of this to yourselves, including you can ask for the citation. And remember when you check that, click on whatever style you want to use, like we're using MLA and notice they're using the eighth edition, which is the one I'm using in this workshop as well. But we're not going to email this to ourselves now. I just want to look at the citation and I can see in the right-hand frame where it says cite. And I'm going to scroll down and look for MLA and there's my citation. So I am going to copy the citation and I'm noticing the author's last name begins with a C. So I'm going to place it in alphabetical order here and it's CA, so it goes right before centers. I'm going to paste it. And remember to look for the little uh, icon, paste options, match destination formatting. So you really only have to format it once and then it picks up the formatting. Uh, I can just right click and ignore all, they just don't recognize the spelling of this name. So here we have two authors and notice this is the correct formatting for two authors. The first author is always last name first because it, the citations are all alphabetically arranged by the author's last name. But when you have two authors, it's comma and first name last. So that is correct. And here we have the title of the article in quotation marks. And this article is found in the American Journal of Public Health. And you will notice that there is a volume and a number. This is the volume and the issue number. And think about watching Amazon or uh, Prime or Hulu, Netflix, and you're watching a show, a, a series, and you're on season 111 and episode four. That's kind of what that is. And you only use the volume and the issue number when you're citing an academic journal, which is exactly what this is. So then we have uh, some kind of a date here is, it's April, 2021. We have a series of page numbers. And then the container, uh, where, we, where do we find all this? Well, we, EBSCOhost again is just the publisher. We are actually looking at a specific database, one of many EBSCOhost databases, and it's called Science uh, Full Text Select. So that's what we're going to type here. We're gonna replace EBSCOhost with, and it's in italics, Science Full Text select. That is the name oops, uh, of this database. And then you'll notice with, an, with academic journals, often they will provide you with uh, what's called a DOI, which is the digital object identifier. It's a unique number assigned to this article. So instead of a URL, it's, it's preferable if you have the DOI, which we do. And then notice there you did not add the, the date of access. So we're going to, I'm just going to copy from another citation and I'm going to add it at the end because I'm finding all of these articles today. And now you notice two of my citations are running together. That's the only time you enter when you're separating your citations. So now I have one, two, three, four, five citations and they are in alphabetical order. Everything is double spaced. Uh, also, everything should be Times New Roman 12 points. That's the default uh, from uh, MLA. That's what they want you to use. And it's very easy to distinguish each new citation because each new citation or each new source begins on the margin. And see how we don't have any extra spaces in between our citations. So we'll just find one more article. This time we'll look for a magazine article. So I'll go back to the same database that I was searching. 
I can refine my search. And I'm going to search again, vaccines, but this time I want a science magazine. So I am going to, since I'm in a science database, I am going to limit my search to magazines. I'm gonna click under source uh, types and here, now you'll notice the word periodical. The EBSCOhost databases use the word periodical to mean magazine. So these are not scholarly, they're not academic, but um, these, especially from this database, these are all science magazines. So these would be acceptable um, in most cases, unless your instructor only wants academic journals, but you should always check with your professor. But here, we have, in fact, we have an article from April 24th, 2021. So that looks good. I might just take that one because then I can also explain a few things. Uh, for example, remember, this is a magazine article. So we would not use the volume or the issue number. Even though they provide us with one, this is not an academic journal. We don't use that. Also, we never use all giant caps unless it's an acronym, uh, there are exceptions, but not when we're citing a person's name. So let's look at this citation. This is the title of my article, New COVID-19 Vaccines in the Works. And look at April 24th. Today's only April 20th. So they publish ahead of time. So I'm gonna click on that. And this happens to have both an HTML and a PDF. So if you see HTML, that just means that you can scroll down and read your article right here. And of course you can email all of this information to yourselves, but we're interested in looking at the citation right now. So in the right-hand frame under tools, I click on site. I scroll down here and I look for MLA and see those two errors, three errors, I think. We're gonna fix this. This should not be all caps. We're gonna get rid of the volume and the issue number because Science News is not a journal, it's a magazine. And we're going to also replace that with the name of the database. And how do I know the name of the database? You can find it usually at the top of the screen or when you look at the article, usually it's at the bottom of the article somewhere, but I don't see it here. It should be at the top there. See under searching, this is the name of the database, Science Full Text Select. You don't need to add anything in parentheses like H.W. Wilson. So let me copy the citation, make sure it's the MLA citation that I'm copying. The author's last name ends with an S. So I'm going to go back to my Word document and I'm going to Back it up here and enter. There we go. And I'm going to paste my new citation. Oh, I didn't copy it, did I? I'll go back and try it again. So I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to enter and paste. There it is. Now, I'm going to match destination formatting. All right, now here's um, what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to delete the volume and the issue number. We don't use those because these, uh, this is not a, a journal. We only use those when we cite academic journals. I'm going to go back and see if there was an exact date. We'll look at that in a minute, but let's change this first. All caps, you can actually uh, scroll up here or there's a big A and then a little A and you can change case. You only wanna capitalize each word. See, that's correct. And then we can right click just to ignore the, they don't recognize the spelling. So we're going to uh, type the um, name of the database again, which was science full text. Select, and I'm going to come back over here and look at this article a minute because I think there was a more exact date. Yes, that's right, it was April 24th. And the citation only um, 
showed me that it was April 20, 2021. That's it. They didn't give me a date because number eight was part of the volume and issue number that I deleted. So it's April 24th. So we're going to come over here and add that 24 before April. And then I'm going to add uh, always space after the period accessed today's date. 2021 period, you end uh, with a period after each part of your citation. And then I, we don't really wanna leave all this space here. So I haven't found the best way to do this, but usually if I click in the middle of the URL somewhere and just enter there, that somehow that works. <laughs> and now I have one, two, three, four, five, six citations. And I have an extra page here. So I wanna get rid of that because I don't, I'm not going to add anymore. So I'm going to delete that page. Oops, I don't know why I haven't deleted it, but I should be able to, but I mean, well, all right, I'm having trouble, but you should be able to get rid of that last page. Uh, or if you're gonna print this, just remember not to print the blank page. So now I have six citations. They're in alphabetical order, right by the author's last name. And you can see it's easy to distinguish each new citation. And if you've forgotten, how did we format all of the hanging indents? If I have any problems, if my citations don't look uh, like they're formatted properly, I could select the, all of them and I can scroll up here and look for the little, mine has the little up and down arrows, line and paragraph spacing. Line spacing options is what I want. And remember left and right zero, special hanging, it's called a hanging indent and the default is 0 0.5. Again, zero, zero before and after spacing. Line spacing must be double and remember you do not want extra paragraphs or extra spaces between your citations. So that's when you say, okay. And then you wanna make sure that everything is Times New Roman 12 points. So you want to be consistent. Your dates should be formatted in the same manner. Notice at the end of every online source, I have access and the date I found it and a URL. And so that is it for the works cited page. I just wanna mention a, a few uh, more things that might help you before I give you the secret password. Um, that way, in case you have to prove to your instructors that you are here. If we go back to the home page, smc.edu slash library, you'll find, first of all, we have a YouTube channel. So this and other workshops and um, other videos, tuto video tutorials will be posted on our YouTube channel, but you can also find them here under workshops and videos. This is our library homepage. I found all the articles in the databases here. You can chat with us here, ask a librarian. We have a 24 hour chat line. And you also might look at the research guides and we have them by discipline and sometimes by topic, but we have one just for citation styles. So when I click on that, there's MLA. You can look at that. You can look at uh, previous MLA workshop videos here. You can also look at sample citations. So if you can't remember, how do I cite two authors? Or how do I cite an article from an academic journal? Um, how do I cite a newspaper article? All right, so, uh, and again, you can chat with us here so this might help you if you need more help. And if you uh, go back to the MLA workshops, you can, again, you can see those there. Just click on MLA and I will be posting this Word document here. You can find the Word document from my last workshop here. This is what the MLA handbook looks like. This is where you'll actually find all the rules and all the detailed information that you need. Uh, any questions you might have about how to cite certain sources, but there are a lot of uh, colleges and universities that have very good sites that will help you. And here are just a few links, uh, like the like the Alec Purdue. This is an interactive practice template. 
that the MLA, the actual uh, Modern Language Association provides. Here's one for citing government publications, Indian River State College. So this might be helpful and you can go directly to this page uh, or to our library guides by going to smc.libguides.com. And you can find all of our library research guides here. So the citation styles are, you'll find the same in, in, under English and literature, you'll find MLA information as well. So I am going to give you the secret code word, which is Pandora. So if you need to explain to your instructor or prove that you actually sat through all of this. And one last look at our works cited page and then I will stop the recording.